uh, very dear friend and uh, worked with, with, with whom we worked for, you know, the first platinum rated uh, hospital, uh, Koinur Hospital in Mumbai, architect Sandeep Shikre, president and CEO Sandeep Shikre Associates, SSA Architects. He is a lead aggregated professional and founding member of the Indian Green Building Council. Under his leadership, his firm has grown from a two-person firm to a team of 240-plus dedicated, committed professionals. The firm renders broad spectrum of services, including architecture, interior design, project management, consulting. Uh, he specializes in rendering high-quality, innovative design solutions and portfolio boasts of various disciplines across not only India, but also Dubai and United States. SSA is specialized in providing solutions and environmentally sustainable buildings. They are also specialized in urban renewal and high-rise projects. With diverse portfolio, SSA has backed many national and international awards. And to their credit, Koinur Hospital, which was the first platinum-rated hospital of Asia. So please welcome architect Sandeep Shikre. Friends, still such time they are putting up my laptop together. How many of architects are here? Can I just see Sandeep Shikre? Wow, that, that's, that's good, very nice. And I must say that I enjoyed the session, uh, especially the previous session was very important. You know, the metering is so important because whatever we do, there has to be always a validation, okay? And this is somewhere we need to catch up. In developed countries, they do something called POE. That's called post-occupation evaluation, whereby they always monitor and validate the performances of the building, especially the engineering performances. Very nicely said by Dr. Patmanabhan, 55% of the energy is consumed by HVAC. And you need to know where are the leakages, where are the malpractices, where are the malfunctioning. So measurement and verification really, really carries a very important role. The job is not over after installing a good project. The job is continuous to ensure that it performs the way you have already installed. Well, I'm going to talk an architect's language. So there is very less engineering. Maybe it will give you some relief before the lunch, some pretty pictures. And this is something where I can probably demonstrate how a designer, how we all together as an architect, engineer, the hospital promoters, doctors, everybody can bring a feel good factor in the hospital. So what I'm going to, yeah, I think it's on. You have to put the other side of this here, no? Sounds good. Yeah, so we have been talking about green. We have been talking about sustainability. And a regular definition of sustainability is water efficiency, energy atmosphere, material and resources, indoor environmental quality, and innovation on design. No matter Griha, US Green Building Council, Indian Green Building Council is evaluating the performance of the project based on these parameters. But there is something that is going to add a more dimension, which is well-being. And the well-being is about the color, daylight, light fixtures. Acoustics is unfortunately ignored. Acoustics plays a very important role. The furniture, how do you put the furniture in the healthcare? How it is non-infectious, how it is more easy, how it is more user-friendly, soft furnishing, art, and wayfinding. Nitin already touched upon this point during his panel discussion. As a designer, he thinks that he can reduce the stress of all the stakeholders of the hospital. I think that's a very valid point. So efficient hospitals to me is a golden spot between sustainability and well-being. Once both of these will come together, we'll see something more innovative coming up in the near future. So when we were designing some hospitals, this was my first talk to my client. Why can't we bring the hospital and home together? Because eventually the patient comes to the hospital to go back to the home. So we have to take away that stigma from that patient that he's away from the home. So how do you do that? There's no big thing, rejuvenation. Anything that rejuvenates the patient and also the doctors and the support staff is going to help the healing process, you know. And a lot of these things have been talked about now. I'm very happy. So I'm going to illustrate you some of these techniques which we used in some of our project. Flooring, the hospital flooring has to be antibacterial, stain resistant, has to be non-skid. But can't the flooring be nice with beautiful patterns, with nice playful ideas so people feel nice about it? Ceiling, I mean this is some illustration of flooring where you can use the color, you can use the inlay patterns. You can use all of those things. Ceilings, you know, most of the time patient looks at the ceiling in the hospital. Why it has to be boring? Why it has to be very drab, sterile? Why can't the ceiling be interesting where you can create a nice... See, all of these things are not expensive 
and they are user friendly for the healthcare. You know, so the minute you start adopting these techniques, it has been observed and surveyed that the patient and also everybody feels good. So some of the illustrations for the pediatric ward, you can play with these kind of a ceilings. And we have done this in our hospitals where people have liked it, they are appreciating it, and they are giving us a good feedback. So wall, again, most of the times you keep looking at the wall, the inpatient. Why can't those walls be interesting where you can really create your windows with a nice drapes where you have beautiful panoramic view. You can create the stenciling on the wall, which can give you a good thing. So it's almost like a home, you know, where you have the nice art on the wall. The bookshelf is there. This gestures. This is the picture of the radiology. You'll be surprised to know when we interviewed more than 30 top surgeons. You know, the common thing that they said that we like a color blue. You know, probably blue is aqua, blue is related with the sky. So they said, we are not able to express you in words, but any shades of blue is really going to make us feel good. So we use a lot of blue shades and the cold cathode through the LEDs in the operation theaters. Lighting plays a very important role. A simple LED lighting which doesn't consume more energy, but it creates that ambience. It creates that soft, soothing atmosphere, which again helps the patient. So all of these things have been experimented. Then we did a detailed study on the elements of the nature. Because all of us like the nature. We go to the hill station on a weekend to relax ourselves, you know. So there is a power in the nature. The human mankind is actually uh, very comfortable with the nature. And whatever built environment is a shelter, you know, to protect us from the extreme weather. So we studied all of these elements and inspiration of the nature. We captured them into a therapeutic values. So we talked with all the scientists, color scientists. We talked with all those people and we could understand there's a lot of therapeutic value in color, texture, and various things that you see it visually. So there's a lot of this chart. I don't want to take your time, but blue color is soothing. So we use blue color in inpatient, you know, because patients are there for a long stay. Green and yellow are good for counseling. Patients are already under trauma, already under tension. There's something wrong with them. So we use green and yellows with the texture for the outpatient department, consulting room, so on. So we captured these things and in this hospital, we gave a detailed presentation to our clients. This is a ground floor plan where there's a lobby, where there's an entrance to the convention center, there's an emergency on that side. So we captured the cold scheme, the warm cold scheme. You'll see most of the hospitals have browns, bansianas, cream, because they are very soft, soothing, sense of arrival is there. So we captured them for all of the ground floor with a nice LED lighting. When we went to the first floor, which is completely an outpatient department and a diagnosis, we used the lime green, green, and it's not only the color, it's also the texture and various other elements along with the color creates together that particular therapeutic influence. So all the waiting areas were using blues, a light green colors. When we went to the operation theaters and all the procedure rooms, the aqua color, the power of water, the power of air, the power of sky. So we captured those and we translated those into our interior design strategy. You know? And it really worked well. We are getting a lot of good feedback. A small gesture like this on a ceiling where it really relaxes the patient and so on. So this is a MRI suite. Children, you know, the pediatric, we literally created an uh, area for them. And the room numbers of the children were not a room number 301. It was like Lion King, Pocahontas. So even the kid would say, hey, I'm in a Lion King today. You know? And we literally had a situation where the kid, after getting well, was refusing to go home. You know, they wanted to be in a hospital for a quite long time. So the well-being has a lot of influence on the mental psyche of the patient, the pediatric uh, examination table, a small gestures, etc. So there's a whole lot of uh, uh, papers we have got. Anybody's interested, I would be very happy to share this with you. Coming to a little serious topic, I think envelope. Envelope of the healthcare is very important. It is 24 by 7, 365 days operation. 50% energy is consumed through air conditioning. So as an architect, we must ensure that we do not put any adverse impact on the air conditioning. Do your building, which is nicely oriented. Ensure that the surfaces where there will be a lot of heat gain, especially from the southwest, you insulate them. You know, we are not using the strategy of insulation. Insulation is very easy. In ancient times, our ancient gurus and architects used to have a cavity walls. No extra money spent. But the cavity wall provides automatically the heat reduction, you know. So the, we did that in Coinder Hospital. We got a platinum here. We could save on an ASHRAE guideline, almost 28% of the saving, which was, trust me, nothing special we did. I don't think there is anything rocket science that we knew. We only followed the fundamental rules, which we had forgotten over a period of time. And we could see that we are reaching to the platinum. Then we took a little bit more efforts, and we got the platinum. But there is no rocket science. 
there is no extraordinarily uh, imported uh, technology or science with it. We followed the simple principles whereby the envelope is very sincere. Now you have a software which can validate your entire energy simulation. It tells you in a digital format what is the heat gain, how do you mitigate with it, provide a proper glass. You need a glass, you know, because glass also gives you a beautiful daylight, glass gives you the beautiful visual light transmission, but glass also attracts the heat and glare. So if you use it properly, the glass manufacturers have gone way ahead. I love that industry. They have been always meeting our craving and they have been doing everything that we are demanding for. You have a clear substrate glass where the VLT is more than 70% and the performance is 1.4 U value, shading coefficient 0.24, amazing. So you cannot crave now that I do not have the resources. As an architect, you have all the resources. You must know how to find them and put them into your building. This is what I did. I just created a double wall, simple double wall with the cavity. And on the external wall, we put the polystyrene boards, no extra cost, very little cost. But the energy saving up to 28%. And all these spaces, this is the end wall section, recessed window, again an ancient science, recessed window provides you the shading coefficient, doesn't allow you to get the sun inside the thing, that's what we did. So that's what is a section, what we did, no extra cost, user friendly, no maintenance, nothing, it's lifetime. So then we use all the rooftops. You can see the double wall concept there. All the horizontal surfaces has to be green. You know, so we created that green roof. People are worried if you do a green roof, it's difficult to maintain with the plants, the insects will come, waterproofing will become problem. This hospital is live for last 11 years. No waterproofing problem, no insects, nothing. You have beautiful plants which are healthcare friendly. You must again educate yourself and put them they save tremendous energy. It's like we put a cap when we go into a sun. So the building also needs a cap where you don't take that hot summer inside the building. That's the place where you need to conceal the unwanted heat going inside the building. Very easy strategy, not expensive. Put a separation layer, put again a proper vegetation strategy and it's done. So we did that. It's actually the picture of the rooftop. Then I come to a daylight. Daylight, people have been talking. This is a hospital where we have 92% of the areas which are daylight, only some areas in the basement, I could not provide a daylight. But today that technology is available where you have a daylight tubing. You know, so there is something called daylight harvesting and you can get the daylight. Daylight is free and it has been proved that daylight has a lot of influence on your healing process. So you must encash how the daylight can come. Now the daylight doesn't come only by providing a large window. Create a skylights. In a hospital, if you can open up the plan, if you can create a corridor, because most of the times you will see in hospitals, the corridors are double loaded. And then they naturally go into the mechanical lighting. But if you have an opportunity, not that every time you will have an opportunity, open up the plan. Create those intermediate skylights. They will give you a beautiful light. They will also allow you to have a nice indoor plantation. So the whole scenario changes. Courtyard architecture is our own architecture. We need to ensure that we implant that into the building. We could do that in many of our buildings. Most of the daytime, the lighting is off. Lighting is off, you know, 5% maybe the mechanical lighting is on, otherwise 95% of the areas are lighting is off. And these are all put on a daylight sensor, so automatically it happens, no manual error taking place there. All of these areas, you see there is no light on. Uh, these are all the hospital pictures of our design, everywhere you can see. Okay, let's talk about the indoor environmental quality. A lot have been talked about. Indoor environmental quality, the regular measures that you have a humidity sensors, you have an increased air, air delivery, you ensure that there is a zero VOC material, air conditioning COP of the machine is more than 6.1, but there is something that I want to share with you, very important. I think this will be a good take home for all of us. This is very common and I think everybody knows this, zero VOC material and taking a proper care. But there is something extraordinary that is happening. Again, this is about controllability, you know, what you are comfortable with the temperature, your other person may not be. What lighting you are comfortable, other person may not be. So the controllability, you know, while doing the project, we try to save the money. So we try to put all the lights in one circuit, one on off. But if you do a circuiting properly, you can ensure that they are working in a different way. So in the night, the lux level in the corridor is not required as high as it is required in other time. So you should be able to control and bring it to that optimum level. So you save the energy. So Dr. Kamal Mittal, I don't know how many of you know him. He is a legend of our country and he is doing an extraordinary research on indoor environmental quality. He is the head of Paharpur Business Center. And what they are doing is extraordinary. They have almost discovered 370 species of the plant. 
which is patented. You should be proud to know that an Indian has done that. These are the plants which produces an oxygenated biofiltering air. So in their power food business center on the terrace, they have actually planted these trees and all the air conditioning which goes inside the whole building, it goes through these plants. So those plants provide a pure antibacterial quality, pure more oxygen and the oxygen level in the building is awesome. This is all what how it removes the toxin. 3,700 indoor plants, they have a hydroponics planters, ambient air temperature, air curtains at every point, 30 feet special mats. These are the simple things. Again, it doesn't cost much. But you'll see CO2, PM1, PM2.5, PM10. I don't know how many of you know that this PM is going to be very dangerous for us. This PM10, PM2.5 is a new pollutant. I understand that it is dissected. It's less than our hair. Once it sits on our lungs, it cannot be removed. So it's very dangerous for our life and it's spreading in our air. This is the building where these plants have been put at a various locations and look at this chart. I was there on one of these days. They measure this every day. If you see sixth floor, what is the PM12, PM10, PM1? What is the CO2 level? What is the TBOC level? What is the ozone level? What you were saying about the metering of electricity. Here they are metering the air quality. They are metering the air quality every day, 365 days. And see the results that they have got 99% saving. Can you imagine all of us, what we are smelling the indoor air, they have 100% better performances there. This is where the PM10, 689 average building and they have 9. Can you see there in the second chart? PM2.5, PM 492 average building, they have 5. VOC 150, they have 0. So the people who are working in this building are enjoying a fresh air their life is going to be a better and longer. And this is not expensive. This is not expensive. This does not take money. This only requires a courage and an intellectual approach to ensure the strength of our own plants. This is purely Indian. And they have been rewarded in a Harvard School of Research and on TED Talk and everything. I can give you the YouTube link. And together now we are developing a well-being rating system which will be out in the month of December. We will try and start this ball rolling and I need all of your support to understand how this can play an important role, not only in healthcare, but every building, every commercial space where you go and you can actually enjoy the best indoor air quality. Today, the larger diseases, respiratory problems, I mean, you will like, agree with me that people have a lot of asthma, they have bronchitis, they, they're not there, you know, the, especially the small children. It's all because of the air quality. So we need to look into it. This is about the lighting. As I said, the lighting can be done very nicely if you do the circuiting where the light need not be on together. Light can be on with the combination. Light can be done as per the requirement of a particular area. Like in the night time, you only have the core light which is on. And you just know the path. You don't need a full light on because nobody is doing nothing there. So these are all methods. How do you save the light? The light when the doctor is inspecting the patient, naturally he doesn't need a light there. But most of the times you will find these two lights are on one switch, so both of them are burning to save the capital cost. But there's the operational cost which keeps burning two lights where doctor can be only at one place while the two lights are on. Go to the consulting room of the old doctors. They have one switch for every bulb. So they save the money. And we need to catch that, you know, simple techniques. So lighting can play again a well-being character where it can be done nicely. You can play with the LED so that there is a change of colors. So there is a change of ambient look and feel. So people feel good about it. So energy efficiency, of course, a uh, lot have been talked about, a lot of methods are there. Uh, solar energy, the renewable energy, it's something which is catching up very well. There's a wind power. We should do that on-site, off-site renewable energy so we save, you know. And as I said, with the good metering equipment, with a proper strategy of HVAC and a good envelope, can win you minimum 25% of the saving. You can see here our chart, we could achieve one ton for 500 square foot. Normally, all healthcare units, if I'm not wrong, the one ton is for 350 square foot. But today, this is what we did it 11 years back. But today, slowly people are catching one ton for 600 square foot. So it's good. I'm happy that this knowledge has been captured and people are doing that. Lot of saving in the capital expenses, naturally a lot of saving in the operational expenses. So these are all the measures, variable volume control, CO2 sensors, heat recovery system, 40.07% saving we could do with all these measures. This is live. And this is what that hospital is enjoying. Maybe 5-10% is going here and there while it's in operation. And most importantly, this myth I want to break. We had to put 
only 3% extra cost. I have captured all the items here, right, from CO2 sensor to occupancy sensor, heat recovery, low VOC, low flow fixtures, which normal hospital would not have, which we had to do it to get the platinum. And the total cost of that was 1 crore 79 lakh rupees as against the total cost of project 60 crore. So it's a 3.5% extra cost and almost 28 to 35% saving for a lifetime. That's what is the benefit, you know. So people have a myth when you want to go for a platinum or a gold, there's an additional cost. Today, there is no additional cost at all. So water efficiency, of course, water is very important. So all the measures we did, the recycling of water, we ensured that there is a low flow fixtures and everything has been done properly, water balance, so we could achieve almost 40%, 41.3% 40 of the reduction. Again, this science is very well developed, so I don't need to take much time to explain you this. Acoustics. Acoustics plays a very important role. It's proved that even the noise of the sandal of the nurse disturbs the patient when he or she is under trauma. And a knowledge worker, if he is distracted from his focused attention, it takes 14 minutes for that knowledge worker to come back to the same level of focus attention if acoustic distracts it. So acoustics also very important. So you need to take care that all your drop doors have a drop seal, all your surfaces have to be sound absorptive, so that, you know, that's the reason even people use the vinyl flooring. People use the soft flooring because the movement of the bed, the movement of so many people should not give that kind of an acoustic disturbance. So you have good acoustic experts, you have good acoustic vendors, you know. So you need to take care, there are sound absorptive surfaces on wall, ceiling and on the floor that gives you the best thing. Furniture, uh, furniture, I, I think it's very simple, nothing that touches the floor. You know, everything has to be above the floor because hospital floors have to be clean. There should not be any two surfaces joining each other so that the dust gets accumulated and it becomes more infectious. So anything that you do, simply elevate it on top so that all your sofas, tables, chairs, everything, if it is free from sitting on the floor, it's going to help you a lot for housekeeping and everything. And what we did, what we did, that our 100% furniture was off-site. We took an oath that we will not carpenter any furniture on-site. So no order, no glues, no adhesives, no formaldehyde. So we gave a task to our designers, 100% furniture off-site. Everything has to be done outside. It comes plug and play. So anytime you want to remove it, anytime you want to retrofit it, there's nothing that have stops in place. All of these panels you see, they are off-site. Only thing, very, very few things we had to do it on-site, however, 5%. That is the only work we did on-site. So off-site work helps you a lot in terms of furniture. You can see all the furniture is loose furniture, is above the floor, no rocket science. Details. Acrovin details where you have the guard bars, how do you have the handrails, how does it go and at what height it goes, how the core detailing for the flooring. So at no given point, floor to wall or wall to ceiling, there are two different materials and those two different materials creates a kind of a crevices where the dust can be there. So it's a continuous material that goes there. Grab bars in the bathroom. You have all the standards available to you. Sock furnishing plays a very important role. People get scared to put the curtains. They feel curtain cannot be put in hospital. Why not? So we have put curtains in the hospital. Only thing that we have been very careful while selecting the material of the curtain, which is very solution dyed polypropylene, which is orderless, water retardant, fireproof, and then it can be done. So that creates that homely atmosphere. So we put, especially in a pediatric ward, where, where the mauve color has got a lot of influence on a pregnant lady. So we use the mauve color, a softer furnishing, it, it kind of brings a little soothing experience for them. You can use these gestures in your guest suites and artwork, you know. So artwork is also something that can add a lot of beauty to your healthcare design, where you can create something as a brand, you know, which is again from the nature. So we created this flower as a brand for Dr. Sarita's uh, pain uh, development clinic and it, it worked out quite beautiful. So everywhere that motif carries, it just kind of allows you to bind the whole design together. And it, it takes you away. Somebody said, Dalit said in the morning, why you have to feel that you are in hospital? Take away that hospital stigma. Also be careful about the smell, everything. You know, so that is what has been looked here. These are the graphics that moves around the whole weight management clinic. Wayfinding, very important. Very important wayfinding because in hospital, people are already under tension. 
and if they start asking where is ICU, ye kidhar hai, wo kidhar hai, it creates that efficiency loss. So wayfinding is a science where anybody who comes, even they come from tier 3 cities, even they come from villages, there has to be a wayfinding in Devanagari, in English, very simple. And what we did is we used in wayfinding again a flower and we designated every floor with the color. So people can associate ICU is a blue color, diagnosis is a green color, that is an orange color. You know, there is an immediate recognition of the color. So we created a directory which is very user friendly and you know that okay, my relative is on a green floor. You know, so you understand that very well and this really worked very well. And we created that flower as a brand. So again, it's interesting to read. It's not boring and in a very kind of thing. That's what we did. And this is what we did in Birla Hospital where the, the feather of a peacock was a motif and that carries everywhere. So there's a color on every floor which creates that kind of a identity. And floor, hospital floors are very important where you can have a wayfinding. So the floor right from the entrance to the elevator till you reach, the same more color carries till that floor. So you know, just follow the color and you'll go on that floor. So there's a lot of intricated science in this and this is also very important that can be done. So together, we talked about color, we talked about lighting, artwork, envelope, acoustic, soft furnishing, daylight, furniture, wayfinding, and most importantly, indoor environmental quality. So I feel these things together will help the patient to heal. Well, I wanted to say that to go ahead, uh, we have to ensure we have no choice, but we have to go green. Thank you very much. We have a student's chapter, as I mentioned, and we would be very happy to welcome all the students, young professionals, to join the brigade that we have to educate the young and take them to uh, the real-time story of the professional stalwarts. So we conduct a lot of programs. These all programs are absolutely free of cost. We have been fortunate enough to get some good social corporate responsible people who sponsors this program. So I strongly advocate join this mission with me and also help us grow this to all our city level, nation level, so that we get our next generation looking into it right from inception. Thank you so much, Mr. Sidney, for such a lovely presentation. Uh, I'd request our managing director, Vikas Wedge, to present a memento to Mr. Shekhar, please. Vikas on stage. I'll be happy to pick up one or two. Yes. Hospitals, because air conditioning by itself has got uh, good as well as bad effects. One is, as you said, that there is so much of emission of uh, the uh, uh, whatever greenhouse gases and things like that. That is one. The other thing is the aspect of when you are talking about air conditioning in hospitals, you cannot recirculate the air all the time. So recirculation of air also brings in the aspect of microbial content which tries to multiply. Probably you will have microbial filters and what not. Uh, very good question. Yeah. Very, very good question. And yes, HVAC is a blessing for these guys. So the modern healthcare facility is largely dependent on a precision air conditioning. So we have a HEPA filters, we have a laminar flow. But if you'll see the ancient hospitals, you know, I yet believe they were the good design. They were low rise and they had all the departments separate. You know, you see the old uh, government hospitals where the operation theater ICU is a different block. Yeah. The IPD is a different block. The out OPD is a different block and they are connected with the corridors. So they have taken care that it's not a multiple composite building. They have segregated the architecture as per the usage and as per the stringent requirement of that particular area. 
and most of them were non air conditioned because you require your operation theater That's which has to be air conditioned yeah, okay. you require your ic to be air conditioned but you don't need your outpatient department where your consulting is happening where your diagnosis is are happening even in the inpatient department you don't need air conditioning so you can at least save probably 55 to 60% of the hospital area which could be non air conditioned so i strongly feel that this is a good science and this can be very intelligently used especially in tier 2 cities because in tier 1 city you have a pressure of a less land and larger hospitals to be built so naturally you tend to go multi story probably it's little tough to have a combination of air conditioning and non air conditioning but definitely where you have a good amount of land you don't have a pressure of uh, uh, the footprint analysis you can promote uh, naturally ventilated areas because naturally ventilation areas have a lot of power uh, we will it be uh, is it mandatory then that uh, if it is multi storied uh, hospitals do you require air conditioning well uh, it's not mandatory it is surely not mandatory one can think innovative one can even create the inpatient department above certain level those areas can be those floors can be independently naturally ventilated True. we have done that in couple of our places where we have provided the hvac but an option to the occupant to on it or off it so the whole air conditioning system is modular it's not like by default the whole hospital is air conditioned so there are different different vrv units which serves to a different zones so it's a option that in an extreme weather condition only in those 2 3 months you are using air conditioning otherwise you are good with the natural weather so definitely good point i think it's a good thought for all the yes but it has to be thought at the inception of the project so something that can be done and it also depends on which part of city which part of uh, micro climate response you are developing healthcare unit but definitely naturally ventilation can be exploited to its best yeah, apart from the audits what you do electrical audit and things like that how much is the grid becoming smarter so that uh, uh, when air conditioning load is not required you can you have sensors and so many things today you have smart homes where they have integrated all sorts of sensors and gizmos where you can curtail the use of electrification whenever it is not needed why it is not happening is it happening or in what extent is it happening in hospitals see actually you touched upon a very good point and that's something that i'm trying to advocate you go and buy a glucose biscuit right you buy it for maybe 10 20 rupees if you see that glucose biscuit box it tells you all the ingredients that goes in that glucose biscuit everything it tells you what is the sugar level what is it but none of our buildings ever says what is inside that building no matter it's a healthcare or anything we are trying to advocate on the ground floor lobby for all public buildings there should be a chart which should very clearly say that this building has this acoustic level 52 db this building which is user friendly we don't want to put the complicated things there but person must know i am getting into an hospital which has got this kind of a co2 levels this kind of a pm2 level so there will be that awareness dr rajiv badonkar said it has to be from the bottom to top the minute the consumer will start demanding the industry will automatically will behave to it so very good point again surveys feedbacks understanding the operational comfort of the various people doctors patients patients relatives ward boys support staff housekeeping it's very important and that's something where our country needs to catch up in a research analysis our engineers are doing a good job i must say they are way ahead of us they are giving us all the solutions which are good like dr padmanabhan said but as an architect and designer we need to have our analytics surveys by taking the sample surveys with the operational healthcare units we can get this kind of a feedback you know what people are liking what people are not liking and that can be imbibed into a design program our design programs are very monotonous they are not thoughtful let me tell you i mean i am a critic of our own works so we have to do that and i am surely seeing that in next future the research and analysis will be the basis for the design programming when i say design programming very correctly said by the gentleman do we really need everything to be central air condition can we do 30% natural air conditioning do we need this that so there are jci nabh guidelines those we have to follow but what more we can do as a architect and as a designer there is a paradigm shift which i personally feel is required where it has to be people centric so the topic of my was people centric design because it's for the people so we have to understand people more and not work in isolation with our own intelligence and our, our own Uh, thoughts the more dialogue we'll have with the people more insights we'll get and something new will come out that's what i think all of us must understand thank you thank you
hundred percent. That will work. That will work. Good question again. Her question was putting those plants on the terrace, which are which are oxygenated plants, and running your air conditioning air through those plants. Will it work in healthcare? Yes. It will work in any premises. It will work in, but it will be tedious. It will be little tedious. Mm. So we have to be careful while not only implementing it, but the operational people. See, operational people are very important. We do all the things and we walk out. The operational people has to be convinced in his heart that whatever is given to me, I'm going to use it the way it is given to me. I'm not going to dilute it. I'm not going to make my own rules and then change everything that is given to me and start using it the way I want to use it. So the answer, yes. There are case studies where it is already used, used in healthcare units. There are Japan. Japan is way ahead of the world. You see, Japan is spending a lot of time in understanding the power of plants. You, you see, so many things are there on YouTube where they are creating the office premises, public buildings, institutional buildings, healthcare buildings, where they are matching the plants and the outdoor nature with the indoor. So it's definitely doable. So even the infection can be kind of... Yes, it can be controlled. Maximum actually fall sick more in a hospital the longer you stay in it. But again, the, these airs are not just passed through the plants. They have a filters. Right. They, they check. See, the whole process, when it passes, it goes through the sixth level of stringent process. Right. And only then it gets pushed into the area. Correct. So it's not simply taking it through the plants no, and I pushing understand. it inside. There's a complete science which is patented, so I'm not allowed to disclose. No, but Correct. there is a complete science where how it has been checked and how which air has been passed, which air has been not passed, which is flushed out. So there's a whole process of doing that. And it is under research. So anything has started now will get fine-tuned in another couple of years. And it will have a completely well thought, properly system At where it At the present moment, it's not like fully functional? It's not for the masses. It's for their own building they have done it. And they're experimenting on it. Okay. And they're experimenting it with the Harvard uh, experts. They're experimenting it with the best of the people in the world. So I personally reckon it will take at least another two calendar years to go through that stringent process. And then whatever will come out of it will be very well tested, user friendly, which any one of us can use. You know, the way the the radiant cooling system came. So initially it was through that process. Today it's common. So something of that thing will so happen. Planning something doesn't make but sense my point to you is not only that, my point is to make you aware what is happening. Right. And your own intelligent mind can come up with something which is more innovative. Hmm. You see, because we are all also contributors to these particular thoughts and technologies. Don't think that we are always on a receiving end. We right. can be on a giving end also. So you must know what's on. Oh. And then, then your mind can come up with something which is more brilliant, you know? Yeah. Sir, I'm Umesh Sawan from Hinduja Hospital. This is regarding, uh, we have two buildings, old building and the new building. Both the buildings having asbestos roof. So we are getting a lot of heat from that. So can you suggest something to be done on the roof so that we can curtail our air conditioning cost? Oh, well, plenty of solutions. I think we'll talk offline. Okay. And I can, I can talk to you. Plenty of solutions, which okay. you can do it very comfortably while the hospital is on without taking any breakdowns. There are plenty of solutions, which will be quite energy efficient uh, and all up. You know, you can do that. Okay, sir. What about the use of uh, solar panels? Getting in touch, I think, uh, I think they prefer asbestos and things like that. Yes. No, asbestos by itself is carcinogenic. True. Of course, it has to be eliminated. True. But in case if it is a temporary roof structure also, above that you have the solar panels be getting integrated. So it curtails the heat, it reflects the heat, Absolutely. and things like that. Absolutely. At the same time, it generates electricity. Absolutely right. So it's a Absolutely. win-win situation in such a situation. Absolutely. You must exploit the benefit of the solar energy that we are getting. It's free, and it's predicted by 2050, the entire globe will be energy positive. You know, So I don't think energy is going to be a major concern to us as the time will come. Water yeah. and indoor air quality, trust me, these are our two biggest worries in the future. Energy people have already done wonderful exercises, wonderful researches, and I, to me, I, we have already won over that battle. We have to only implement it. But the two big scare that we have is the water and the indoor air quality. Okay, I think friends, uh, okay, I can take maybe one. one. Uh, thank you, we really enjoyed the lecture, and I am from HKS and also an architect and uh, really enjoyed uh, the passion and the optimism. But uh, just wanted to ask you, uh, what are the kind of challenges that you faced while you designed? I mean, it's, 
it's great that you have a positive outlook, but uh, sometimes it's nice to know the challenges also. Again, a very good question. You know, uh, this is, again, I would like to appeal to all the people here. Healthcare is way behind to the other disciplines. You know, I have been really trying to best from my point of view and advocating that healthcare is the first thing which needs the green approach because it is 24 by 7, 365 days, dealing with the patient's life and death, having so much of our energy consumption, six times, very correctly said, if you compare it with the hotel, even hotel is 365 days, 24 by 7, healthcare consumes six times energy than uh, any other discipline. So it is first thing that the healthcare people, the promoters, everybody should look into it in a very positive manner. Not that people did not want to do it, but I think they were over focused on their core strength of taking a good equipments, going with the state of art, you know, things which are going to actually be working with the patients. So this particular sector, I would not blame, but unintentionally was not very aware the power of how these things can help them save money and also help them get a better feel good factor, which again Nitin said in the morning, right. which is going to help them in developing their brand. So I, I have faced these challenges. So what I do, we do design that we like, you know, and then we show it to our clients, hey, have a look at it. This is something that we have done. And naturally it is giving you this performance betterment. Naturally it is giving you this for no extra cost. And it will give you a better motivation if you will go for a rating system. No matter Griha or a USGBC or a IGBC, they are all same. It gives a motivation. It gives you that high that you are yourself validating your performance. Isn't it that you feel good when you get a distinction in your exams? Right. So I think that's the way we are trying to mitigate the challenges with our clients and our success ratio has been 100%. So I think every designer has to do that and nicely explain it through your uh, working and through your demonstrations. Nobody would say no to it, you know. So that's that's an important point, yeah. That's great. Uh, offline. Can I, can I just jump in on that? I sure. mean, you know, like challenges will always be there and you know I think often in the face of a no the question to be asked is how can we get from an unconditional no to a conditional yes correct right what is it that will get you to a you know if this then okay I'll consider it because you know not all projects start by saying that yeah I want a lead platinum or that kind of thing but that's one part of it and I do think the other part of it is you know, uh, understand the motivation of the person in front of you and align what you're trying to do with that motivation. I think that's a very big part. So, so offline we can uh, discuss later yes. uh, what are the kind of ways that we could contribute to your educational in, uh, initiatives. Yes, yes true. So that we can discuss online, uh, offline without taking more of your time. Certainly. Just to conclude on the note, uh, in London, they do POE. That's a post-occupation evaluation. And it's been done by a very valid and an unbiased body. And they give a rating, like you have a rating for your shares, like a crisis rating. So when that rating is given to that healthcare, naturally that healthcare also enjoys the benefit of being a brand. You see, they enjoy it monetarily, they enjoy it otherwise also. So I'm very sure this is going to be, like don't we go to any place with the reviews, the Zomato reviews. It's going to become very common here. So we should advocate as a designer and as an engineer and as a technocrats to have the evaluation and evaluation will show the result automatically the pressure will come from the bottom and it will become a regular language. Then you don't have to take any efforts to convince your client that you go for it. People will ask for it and there will be no choice but to go for it. That's, that's a simple way to do it. He wanted to ask something, anything I have to take here. Actually, I did not want to ask. Uh, what I wanted to say is that it was a very impressive presentation. And, uh, you know, I just saw that uh, words, healing with design. I think that is where we all should think about. And as a responsible designer, I mean, we all are designers, but now I'm reso um, th there is a resonance in thought process. And this is what we should work on, like healing with design. If we can do that, then that design uh, we as designers will make a big difference in in building uh, architecture. So this is a really good good one. I really actually like it. Okay, thank you very much. Have a one.